Hello everyone, and welcome to the fifth Hammer tutorial. This tutorial works for all Source Engine games, but I am using Portal 2 authoring tools to make this tutorial. In this tutorial, we will be going over prop types, placing props, and how to use them. So the first thing that we need to do is select our Entity tool, or Shift-E, and place a prop. You'll get your Gordon Freeman, or your Player Spawn, or whatever your default entity is. Double-click him, and then in the class, type prop underscore. You'll get lots of different props, but the ones that we'll focus on are prop dynamic, prop dynamic override, prop physics, prop physics override, and prop static. We'll go ahead and place a prop static first. This will be a prop that doesn't move, it cannot animate, and it cannot receive any modifiers from anything else. All it is is solid or not solid, and sits there and looks pretty. This will be things like trees, or debris on the ground that you don't want to move, or air conditioning units, and what have you. So, once you're here, you're presented with a list of things that may seem a little daunting. Really, we just want to focus on world model. So click Browse, and you'll be presented with the model browser. If nothing loads in the model browser, that's normal. Simply close out the model browser, and click Browse again, and it should open without an issue. I want this to be an AC unit. So I'm just going to type AC. And you'll get a search and you'll also get previews of everything that you can choose from. So I'm going to scroll down. There should be an AC unit here somewhere. Here we go. Here's an AC unit. So now we can inspect our prop in the 3D view. Zoom in and out on it or move it around or what have you. There will be four checkboxes here. This is wireframe. If you're interested in seeing the wireframe, that's how you can view it. Collision model. The collision model is a solid part of the model. This is what the player will collide with or bullets will collide with. It's a physical part of the model. Notice that a collision model is much more basic than the actual model itself. It's just to make the physics engine a lot cheaper to render, especially for multiplayer environments. You can have the no ground view, which disables that square grid on the bottom. bottom. And lock view. I have no idea what lock view does. I've never figured it out. There will be five tabs, maybe more depending on your version of Hammer. But the ones that will always be there are Render, Sequences, Activities, Skins, and Info. Under Sequences, we can see if there's any animations. There aren't for this model, there's just idle. For Activities, there's none for this model either. For Skins, there's just Skin Zero. Again, nothing special for this one. Now what we want to see is Info. Under Info, we'll see some information about the prop itself and how it was compiled by the modeler. There will be three checkboxes. These designate what prop type it can be. This model cannot be physics. It can be static or dynamic, and it has a mass of 10. So this is the model I want to use. I'm going to click OK and Apply, and we'll see that the model instantly pops up in my 3D view. I think our house could use this air conditioning unit right up here. So while it's on the ground, I'm just going to press Control x and then Control v That's a quick, easy way of basically teleporting the model in the 3D view. So Control x for cut, and Control v for paste. And I'm just going to move the model around in my 2D views to get it in the position that I want it to live. And I'm pretty happy with that. Cool. So now, we're going to create another entity. This is going to be a prop dynamic. So select prop underscore dynamic. We just want the normal prop dynamic. Since I'm in Portal 2, Portal 2 is really famous for its arm panels. So I'm going to create one of those. So I'm going to click browse and select arm. Okay, so this is the model that I want. We'll see that it's only compiled for dynamic. Under its sequences though, there's a massive list of sequences. And I'll get into these in one moment. So I'm going to click OK, Apply, and that's my static prop. I'm just going to put him over in the corner for right now. Now we're going to copy him and give him an animation. Dynamic props are allowed to animate in a looping fashion, or they can play through once and stop if you put hold animations on. Hold animations will only exist in certain versions of Hammer. I do believe from Portal 2 and on, but I could be mistaken. 
Now we're going to go back to our model browser by clicking on World Model, and then we're going to go to the Sequences tab. If we click on one of these sequences, we'll see that the model springs to life in the preview. So these are how you can preview animations, but there's an easier way to do it in the world. So we're going to click on the Model tab in the Class Info. Click Model, and we'll see those sequences that we just saw before. I'm just going to find one that I think I like. We're just going to go with the test one. Really active. And you'll see that model spring to life in your level. Select test anim, or whatever text is here. That's the animation. And then in the class info, scroll down and under default animation, paste it here. Click apply, and then you can close that. There's ways to change animations on the fly, but that'll be covered in an inputs and outputs tutorial to come. Now we're going to create a couple physics prompts. So we're going to create a new entity, double click it, and do prop underscore physics. We're going to select world model, and we're going to browse for a physics prop that I know has physics information, which is a turret. So under NPC's turret, we'll go to info, and we'll see, yes, this is compiled for physics. So we'll click OK, and apply. There's other options in here that you can configure as well, such as the weight of an object by the mass scale. All this information, if you're confused on what some of these do, you can click this help button at any time. It'll populate the list of the entity help, and it will give you a description of every flag or value that you can set for this entity. So mass scale, a multiplier for the map. So mass scale, a multiplier for the object's mass. There's a ton of helpful information in here, and instead of me going over every little thing, I'm just going to tell you guys to read this. There's just simply too much to cover if I were to go over it manually. Now we'll just rotate our little turret friend. He won't actually shoot at me in-game because he's just a physics prop. The turrets in Portal 2 are actually NPCs. Again, we'll cover that at a later time. So I have my two dynamic props, a prop physics, and a portal turret over here. Now, what if there's a physics prop that I want to have not move? Now, this is this is kind of a tricky thing, or you would think. So, this turret was only compiled for models, but I want him to be over here and just not move. In fact, I want him to sit on this arm. So I'm going to rotate him around, but right now, he'll just fall right through it. Some models don't have a collision model. If you want to see the collision models in the, in the world, click CM at the top. And that'll draw the collision models over all the models that you see. We'll see that this arm has no collision model at all. So if this was a physics prop, it'll just fall right through. But we need to change him from physics. So we're going to select physics in the class info and change it to dynamic override. And click apply. Even though this model is only compiled for physics, we're overriding its compiled information and forcing it to be a dynamic prop. Dynamic props don't move unless you tell them to. We're also, we're also going to make him sing. So we're going to copy his animation and put it in default animation here. So he'll do his little turret dancey thing. Now, what if we have a prop that doesn't move, but we want it to be physics? This happens quite a lot. So I'm going to take a computer. I do believe there's a computer model in here that is static. Yeah, good enough. So this is static and dynamic only. We're going to make it a prop physics override. Now it does exactly what the prop dynamic override does. It overrides the information and forces it to be physics. So. To make sure that I can pick this up, I'm going to set the mass scale to 0.02. So the mass of this object is one-fifth of what the modeler told it to be. I'm now going to go ahead and hit F9 to compile my level. Click OK. And now I'm going to load the level in game. OK, cool. So once the level loads, we'll see that we have our dancing panel. We also have our turret over here that's seeing his heart out and he's not falling through. You can tell that this doesn't have a collision model because I can walk right through it. There's our prop static up on the wall, not moving anywhere. 
And here is our, what should be prop static, that I can actually pick up and throw around. Our NPC got a little messed up, but that's okay. Now you'll notice on physics props and dynamic props that there's a shadow underneath them. This is called a cheap shadow, and we'll go into this in more detail during the lightning tutorial to come. So, I hope this tutorial helped you place props in your map. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Stay tuned for more informative information on Valve's Hammer Editor. Thanks once again, and happy mapping.